A very good evening to everyone present mm -hmm. here. I'm Shruti, your host for this evening, and I welcome you all to today's promising panel discussion on alternate careers in art. As an artist myself, I am as eager to get in the room. But first, let me take this opportunity to introduce our guests on the panel who have carved their successful careers in unconventional fields. Art restorer and consultant, Akshay Agarwal, recipient of several awards, along with a grant in printmaking and HRD culture scholarship, Akshay sir has been working as an art restorer and consultant with Times of India New Delhi since 2009. He has also worked on various site-specific projects like the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research Contemporary Art Collection and Hussein Museum in Mumbai, Raja Ravi Varma Collection in Kerala, British Era Paintings at Asiatic Society in Kolkata, Miniatures at Albert Hall Museum in Jail. Along with this, Akshayji has also been effectively involved with asset management, in-house collection of art at the Times of India in Delhi and Mumbai. A warm welcome to you, Akshay, sir. Thank you so much. Lovely, lovely lady on the panel, art curator, writer, an affiliated licensing entrepreneur, Jasmine Chaha Varma, began her career as an art reporter at Midway. A few years into being fully responsible for the art day, she went on to curating art shows for galleries, where almost a decade she curated numerous solo and multi-artist shows. In 2013, she established an online venture, Indian Colors, where she licenses images from India's fine artists and presents them as a decor object to the lane. A warm welcome to you, Jasmine Nath. Not a short of celebrity, Demon Vyas is an accomplished animation film designer. Currently working as the chief creative director at Baijus, he has previously played an instrumental role as a senior art director at Zenga Games India. An alumnus of the National Institute of Design, Demon Sir has contributed his talent to the popular Shaun the Sheep series 2, Purple and Brown, and Creature Comfort series, along with the critically acclaimed Hindi feature film, Tare Zameen Pur's animation title series. Collaborating with international studios like Ardaman, working in the tech industry, Bollywood films, art films, and the gaming industry, Demon Sir has been awarded for his excellence and talent nationally and internationally. A warm welcome to you, Dhiman I would now like to invite our moderator for this evening, gallerist and journalist for the past three decades, Savita Hira. Along with heading gallery production, Ma'am is also the co-founder of Art India, India Art and Design Platform, an e-magazine on art, design, and architecture. Welcome to the panel, Ma'am. I invite you to take the event forward from here. Thank you, Shruti. Uh, that was uh, a little introduction about all our esteemed uh, panelists. So uh, to begin um, uh, talking about alternate paths, alternate careers in art, we already uh, have three different uh, uh, careers that we are looking at here, uh, where animation is quite uh, you know fairly well known. A lot of artists get into animation. And restoration is a challenging part. It's a challenging field. And we don't see too many people here. We do see a still lesser traveled um, a path, which is what Jasmine is into, which is uh, talking about uh, licensing art and, uh, you know, uh, doing a curate curations. She curates exhibitions. So uh, before we uh, get on to knowing how these paths uh, can take us forward and whether there are more to it. Uh, let me first uh, address uh, Akshay. Um, Akshay, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself? How did you get into uh, conservation? I mean, you're an artist, you have studied MFA uh, in printmaking. So how did you get into being a conservator? Well, uh, as I said, uh, I had a very technical mind and working with a small format of work. So while I was uh, working at the Gadi Studios in New Delhi after completing my master's, so one of my colleagues insisted me to come over to the studio and see if you can do some, something or help them out with the retouching of the painting because that, that, that is one of the basic aspects 
of conservation where you read at the last part of the painting and you need to have that artistic knowledge for that the use of color the handling of brush working in a small area so when i started that it happened to like uh, instantly kick off like as i said um, i'm very fond of these great masters ravi varma dali european artists so i've been keep looking at the works but to work physically on them was something very new for me and it was very challenging also so as soon as i completed one year or two years in retouching the interest grew up instantly so i started learning the the different processes also how to line the work how to stretch the canvases how to do the cleaning of the painting so step by step it took me about four or five years to learn each and everything on site project on different mediums like how to handle paper how to handle canvas so this is how then i went full time into conservation though i am still in touch with my artwork also not very much but wait so you still paint i you still do print making also still uh, a bit of drawing a bit of painting not much whatever time i get after doing my conservation work or after my office hours wait. so i try to keep in touch with it as good as possible lovely sir uh so let me move on to a uh, jasmine uh jasmine how did you uh get into art affiliation i mean you were more of a, a curator you're more of a writer initially but how did you get there so i uh, began as a reporter and uh, uh, i worked as an art reporter for a long time in midday and nation age and uh, it was in 2004 that i decided to give up uh, mainstream journalism and it was around the same time that i got asked by uh, an art gallery hacienda uh, and uh, punita thakkar who is the owner of it who asked me to curate for her and i was hesitant in the beginning thinking that i'd never done this i wasn't exactly trained for it uh, but uh, she said that you had that i had all the knowledge i had the research and i knew the artists i knew the field so i could uh, put something together so i uh, sort of you know decided that uh, i dug deep into myself and you know try to figure out what theme uh, what i should start with and i went to something which was closest to my heart which is watercolors which is a medium uh, that uh, uh, i find a, a most uh, you know which is a personal medium even for an artist uh, because what you make a, 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 with watercolors is almost like a sketch it comes from the heart when every stroke is intuitive or even if it's thought through uh what you put on paper stays on paper and uh, so i uh, started with uh, my first show which is called still waters run deep and uh, as the name suggests you know uh, it was uh, about uh, 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 about your convictions and coming from uh, you know that place i uh, it was a group show of about 20 people and 20 artists who were seniors like uh, akbar padam singh lakshman shreshta as well as i wanted to promote young artists who had been working for 10 15 years established their career but uh, they had not got the exposure in bombay so i put together a mix of uh, artists like that and uh, that show was really successful a lot of sales a lot of good response even for the curating and everything and uh, i went on curating for a long time uh, that was until uh, 2013 when i thought that uh, uh, you know art needs to reach a wider audience uh, more people need to see because very few people even if sales are good or not good very few people actually see art now uh, it's usually just the niche art loving buying people who come and see or they are students or they are professors the people who are in the art field come and see art or the people who buy art come and see art but general public just like how you go to see a movie people don't go and see art and uh, the lacuna over there is that people don't find art accessible they don't understand the language of art they find it is there, there is a distance and i wanted to reduce that kind of distance 
And I thought the best way to do that would be how the museums abroad do it, which is, you know, that any person who walks in with a ticket can buy a small magnet and take home a Van Gogh or a Picasso or any artist that they have really connected with. And that lives with them. And this way, I wanted to make the language of art accessible by printing uh, products uh, with images of paintings. And that's how I started Indian Colors. Um, uh, which is a licensing business. I make art accessible by licensing art from established contemporary and an artist and printing them on products. The products range from, you know, anything from cups, mugs, to home decor, like cushion covers, to bags, to clothes, to scarves, and a whole range of uh, products are there. And uh, artists, they own royalties on, uh, you know, every time I sell a product, they get something. And uh, people who... Uh, want to gift art, people who want something which is artistic in their house, they get an opportunity to buy something at a fraction of a price. So art is accessible, art right. is, uh, you know, available everywhere. Right. Great. Yeah. So uh, moving on, uh, uh, Dimanji, let us hear from you now. How did you uh, get into animation? You're an, an IDN. And what did you study at NID that you got into animation? Yeah. Before NID, I studied uh, fine art, uh, mainly commercial art, at Vallabhadhyanagar uh, uh, Art College. It's, it's near Anand. So, I have been there for 5 years, I have been besides uh, commercial art, there uh, are all departments there. So, my interest is total art. मतलब सब कुछ कवर करना था मुझे मेरा एटीट्यूड है सब कुछ सीखना है तो वो आ, मैं कभी पेंटिंग डिपार्टमेंट में जाके पेंटिंग करेगा स्कल्पचर करेगा प्रिंट मेकिंग स्टूडियो का चाबी हमारे पास रहता था हमारा ग्रुप था तो वो डे नाइट प्रिंट मेकिंग भी किया लिथोग्राफी सब कुछ तो वो वहां से स्टार्ट हुआ एंड फिर एनआईडी का इंट्रोडक्शन हुआ और NID में मैंने दो साल काम किया उसके बाद ज्वाइन किया एनिमेशन कोर्स और एनिमेशन का इंट्रोडक्शन भी एम एस यूनिवर्सिटी यूनिवर्सिटी से एक प्रोफेसर थे तो उसने बोला कि तेरा रेल स्टेशन अच्छा है यू शुड डू एनिमेशन पर तभी पता चला एन है अहमदाबाद में okay. और वहाँ मैंने विजिट किया और वहाँ पे देखा कि कैसे होता है and luckily वहाँ पे कुछ projects था and वहाँ के teachers they used to do outside work मतलब government का projects so उसमें मैंने assistant जैसे join किया and slowly I learned and then regular course join मैंने entrance exam दिया and I got selected तो वहाँ से animation journey चालू हुआ proper और फिर stop motion भी वहाँ पे सीखा एंड दैट इज लाइक वन ऑफ माय स्पेशलिटी जो स्टॉप मोशन इंडिया में बहुत कम होता है और वो टाइम पे किसको पता भी नहीं तो लंदन से कुछ प्रोफेसर आए थे उसने स्टॉप मोशन क्लासेस लिया तो वो बाद बाद में जाके बहुत हेल्पफुल हुआ जब मैं यूके में आर्मन एनिमेशन स्टूडियो के साथ काम किया दे हैव फॉर ऑस्कर एवर्स तो वहाँ पे काम करने का मौका मिला एंड देन यहाँ पे आके फिर अलग अलग कंपनीज में काम किया एंड सो कहीं ना कहीं फाइन आर्ट का जो नॉलेज है वो बहुत ही हेल्पफुल होता है बाद में जो एनिमेशन में बहुत ही यूजफुल होता है जो जो स्टडी there yeah. is a direct connect you're saying between uh, a fine art doing fine art as a subject and getting into animation yeah and so i think base base jo hai na fine art ka wo hmm. agar strong hai to animation aapke liye bahut easy ho sakta hai only thing animation seekhne ka ek passion hai ya to aapka brain ya talent hai creative brain hai of course hard work to sab log karte hain lekin isme thoda aur hard work hai animation mein jo आपको आपको पता होगा एक एक एनिमेशन में अगर ड्राइंग अगर मूव हो रहा है तो 24 फोर फ्रेम्स आपको ड्रॉ करना पड़ेगा तो एक ही कैरेक्टर अगर घूम रहा है तो बार बार उसको हर एक एंगल में से बनाना पड़ेगा 
सो एनाटॉमी का नॉलेज फिर बार बार ड्राइंग करना उसको एक्सप्रेशन देना एक्टिंग करवाना कैरेक्टर से और स्टोरी टेलिंग एस्पेक्ट भी बहुत सारा होना चाहिए सो so, बहुत सारा चीज है जो एनिमेशन करने के लिए पर स्लोली वो सीखते हैं जब और बहुत सारे मेरे फ्रेंड भी है जो प्रॉपर एनिमेशन कोर्स नहीं किया लेकिन दे आर फ्रॉम फाइन आर्ट बैकग्राउंड तो वो लोग भी अच्छा अभी कैरियर में कर रहे हैं अपना मतलब एस्टाब्लिश एनिमेटर्स है जो डायरेक्टली ऐसे ही सीखे सबके साथ अपने आप और आजकल तो इतना मटेरियल अवेलेबल है ऑनलाइन कोई भी सीख सकता है जो फाइन आर्ट जो कर रहा है या फाइन आर्टिस्ट आर्टिस्ट है Yeah, और आर्ट या आर्ट जैसे एनिमेशन के बाद ना मुझे बहुत कम टाइम मिलता था लेकिन नाइन्टी सिक्स ऑनवर्ड ना मैंने ड्राइंग चालू किया था मेरा इंटेंशन नहीं था कि मैं एग्जीबिशन करूं या ये करूं लेकिन एक पैरल मेरा ड्राइंग एंड पेंटिंग का मैं करता रहता था किसी को दिखाता नहीं था लेकिन Uh, कुछ फ्रेंड्स ने सजेस्ट किया कि यू शुड डू एग्जीबिशन एंड तो तभी से मैं थोड़ा फोकस किया एग्जीबिशन करने के लिए सब प्रॉपर कैनवास पे करना एंड वो सब तो तो लास्ट आई थिंक थर्टीन के बाद मैं कर रहा हूँ एग्जीबिशन एक स्टाइल डेवलप किया है इट्स कॉल नेचुरल आई लव फोक आर्ट तो फोक आर्ट आप मेरे बैकग्राउंड में भी देख रहे हैं Uh, कोई भी दुनिया का फोक आर्ट मुझे बहुत पसंद है तो वो कहीं ना कहीं रिफ्लेक्ट होता है और नेचर से प्यार है तो वो मेरा आर्ट में दिखता है या ही हैज सो जिमन जी हैज डेवलप्ड अ वेरी पेक्यूलियर स्टाइल वे ही हैज कंबाइंड फोक आर्ट अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ यू नो डेकोरेटिव पार्ट विद गोल्ड लीफ टचिंग एंड नेचर सो ही शोस अ लॉट ऑफ ग्रीन लीव्स इन हिज वर्क फ्लावर्स लीव्स and he combines mm. these two three aspects and it's a very unique way of painting and he's good he's good at it too but this is something we have seen we have seen a lot of young students moving from uh, you know doing uh, gd art or uh, uh, mfa uh, a bfa and then they are going into animation so this is an open question to all the three of you any of you can tell us what are the other such fields where fine art becomes a base and then they can take it forward akshay ji akshay ji akshay if you can like jaman ji said that it's a very uh, working not is a very passion driven field so until i'm able to have that it becomes a bit tedious process to continue for so long now when i started as an artist okay i mean 95 all of you must be aware we, we didn't have so much of opportunities or so much of different sectors where we could move on because our teen artists struggling for 5 years 10 years and then making up their mark nowadays i think it's quite open like for conservation if i speak a lot of conservation institutes they are employing artists also for their work the sectors which are required artistic training the artistic capabilities they didn't have to go for a any course or something it's not necessary for them and of course it all depends on them and in conservation also there are many sectors like you can go for geology you can go for archaeology and you can choose subject according to your inclination like you can work on paper you can work on paintings you can work on artifacts you can work on textiles depending on your interest like i had an interest for painting so i went for most of the conservation work were done on painting which i did so i am a big fan of ravi verma work okay so my first retouching was on the ravi verma painting at kellara art gallery so that gave me a very big push oh i mean i'm working on uh, physically working on a ravi verma painting it's right in front of me the hamsa damanti painting so that was a very big push for me to go into conservation full time and apart from them as i said museology where you can take care of museums archaeology you can work with the asi 
so it's a very diverse field and very technical aspect to it you have to be very technically sound you cannot like afford to do any grave mistakes on that so bookish knowledge is yeah of course you require a bookish knowledge for that like chemical composition people come from science background also like if you have a science background in your 12th class it becomes an added advantage if you have fine arts in your 12th class that also becomes an added advantage so science or knowledge of art knowledge of science they both go parallel to each other so you have other people that you work with closely for this knowledge of the chemical compositions and the effect of chemicals yeah, on paper like, or uh, all I this comes the, part of what is the few top conservators of the country like and you know i mean like every sector has a very different way of working like for example wall painting that has a very different way of working with the chemicals painting has a very different way so i, I took up a very basic knowledge you require a very basic knowledge for that to start up and then it depends on you how far you want to go if you really want to go deep into the science deep into the research work or deep into the chemical analysis of a painting then of course we have to study a lot side by side so i didn't go that further i was basically involved with the restoration part and preventive part not into chemical analysis that becomes a different field okay. because there are people there are conservators who are expert in chemical analysis which in fact brings up to the authentication of the artwork like one of my very senior he is a expert in ravi varma painting in authentication of ravi varma painting because we have studied all the chemical compositions of the colors of ravi varma right from the beginning so he does all this research work so these are the like different way yeah. how you can push yourself forward yeah what you want to do so, so it's like i shifted from film making because film making you know i mean it's a very delicate kind of a work it's not like a big canvas is there and you paint fully it's a very de- delicate kind of work same with the conservation it's a very delicate table top work so you keep working like this all the time so i had that passion to work like miniature works so that's how it happened so that brings me to my next uh, aspect of this entire thing do artists need any particular additional skills if they want to pursue a field which is uh, away from you know actually just painting for example um they can go into museology you said they can go into research they can go into animation is there any particular skill that you require to get into animation dimanth uh, can you tell me that yeah animation ke uh, liye mainly main kuch kuch areas ko bata de ki kya kya areas mein aap kaam kar sakte hain jaise fields hai so jo animation uh, aap gaming mein use hota hai to you can go into gaming and animation film particular jo banta hai uske liye aap kaam kar sakte hain then teaching uh, you can teach uh, maybe drawing for animation and obviously then slowly learn animation and tv series mein bahut sara animation hota hai documentary films banta hai at films mein you can do storyboarding character designs बॉलीवुड प्रोजेक्ट जैसे टाइटल सिक्वेंस मैंने तार जमीन पर का किया था या तो दूसरा फिल्म के लिए मैंने पेंटिंग किया था जो राकेश और राकेश जी के लिए फिर आर्ट डायरेक्शन कर सकते हैं सेट डिजाइन प्रॉप्स एंड वो सब युवा इंटरफेस में बहुत सारा आर्ट एंड आर्ट आर्टिस्ट का जरूरत होता है वेबसाइट गेमिंग सॉफ्टवेयर इंटरेक्टिव प्रोजेक्ट्स में रिक्वायरमेंट होता है तो ये सब एरिया है ब्रॉडली बट टू डू द एनिमेशन पर्टिकुलरली बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग ड्रॉइंग स्किल एनोटॉमी पर्स्पेक्टिव पोजिश कैसा होना चाहिए बैलेंस वॉल्यूम कैसे होगा आपका ड्राॅइंग में पर्सनालिटी स्टडी अगर कैरेक्टर डिजाइन कर रहे या तो एनिमेशन कर रहे तो पर्सनालिटी कैसे आप एनिमेशन में ला सकते हैं और एक्टिंग जरूरी है थोड़ा कुछ 
एंड कैरिकेचर कार्टूनिंग वो भी दैट आल्सो प्लेज अ बिग रोल क्योंकि आपने देखा होगा एनिमेशन कैरेक्टर कार्टूनिंग होता है या तो कभी कभी अभी आजकल बहुत लाइक रियलिस्टिक एनिमेशन भी होता है कलर सेंस जो ऑलरेडी आर्टिस्ट के पास होता है वो यूजफुल है लाइटिंग का सेंस है फोटोग्राफी का थोड़ा कुछ नॉलेज है क्योंकि वेन यू वेन यू स्टोरी बोर्डिंग सो यू हाउ हाउ डू यू फ्रेम योर कैरेक्टर स्टोरी टेलिंग के हिसाब से आप कैसे कैमरा प्लेस करते हैं या तो ड्राॅइंग करते हैं और दूसरा लर्न फिल्म लैंग्वेज तो फिल्म लैंग्वेज का थोड़ा कुछ नॉलेज है तो बहुत हेल्पफुल होता है कि कैसे एडिट होता है शॉर्ट बाय शॉर्ट एंड स्टोरी टेलिंग होता है एंड यूज ऑफ डिफरेंट मीडियम्स वो भी बहुत बार एनिमेशन में यूज होता है कभी कभी बैकग्राउंड में आपने देखा होगा वाटर कलर बैकग्राउंड आपने जापानीज एनिमेशन देखा होगा तो उसमें बहुत ही नाइस वाटर कलर टाइप बैकग्राउंड रहता है तो अलग अलग जगह पे अलग अलग फिल्म के लिए अलग अलग मीडियम्स यूज होता है तो वो अगर फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी है तो बहुत ही यूजफुल होता है एंड right. uh, दूसरा है टीम वर्क क्योंकि जनरली आर्टिस्ट uh, जब भी काम करता है तो इंडिविजुअली काम करता है लेकिन जब एनिमेशन में आता है तो वो सबके साथ काम करना है इट्स नॉट लाइक वन पर्सन जॉब सो एक दूसरे के ऊपर डिपेंडेंट है सो एनिमेटर्स काम करेगा या डिरेक्टर uh, है आपके अगर बड़ा टीम है तो आप इन uh, बिटवीनर है सो so, अलग अलग काम डिवाइड होता है और सबका काम एक दूसरे के ऊपर डिपेंडेंट है तो टीम वर्क का जो बहुत ही जरूरी है काम करना सो दिस ब्रिंग्स अस टू अ डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट नाउ कि आर्टिस्ट जैसे वो सोलो काम करते हैं अपनी पेंटिंग अपनी दुनिया अपने ख्याल but mm. here you have to uh, kind of uh, you know answer you have to respond to a brief you have to work with other people so all yeah. these things also come into play uh, jasmine uh, as an entrepreneur you never thought you would be an entrepreneur now if an artist would like to get into entrepreneurship can you talk about a few challenges that you faced i uh, mean you were not an artist but still uh, as getting into entrepreneurship uh, to do with art Uh, yes. Of course, every artist, any ways to market themselves, it's it's a very big uh, challenge. You know, they have to understand how to do it. But over there, they do have certain set paths. You know, like they know they have to approach a gallery and they have to, uh, you know, kind of have uh, invitation cards and they have. There are certain set paths. But as an entrepreneur, can you talk about some challenges? So, as an entrepreneur, so. Uh, artists uh, do go into designing, and uh, that is one uh, stream. Actually, uh, what I do is licensing. So I literally take an image of an art and then adapt. Now, my first challenge was adaptation. So for that, you as an artist, you are you don't you're not taught Photoshop in art colleges, so or Illustrator. So you have to learn those things. It's easy to learn nowadays. There are courses like Udemy and all. So you learn these little skills here and there and start uh, you know there you can do this on your own uh the other so you, once you are past the designing stage then you have to learn about production so where do you source your raw material where do you print it from so all these ropes you need to learn but now when i started digital printing had just you know was booming and it had just come in and it really freed up before i started artists earlier were also doing reproductions so your serigraphs are there or if they were even block printing or doing screen prints on fabric and you know on silk and they were selling it as stoles and scarves and all that the digital printing and what time we are in now things have become very easy uh, so uh, before i get into the hardships of marketing and uh, you know distribution and all that now i find after all these years that there are websites where an artist all they have to do is make the design and they do everything from the raw material so basically how uh, art merchandising the kind we do is that there are these uh, base products like say a mug for instance so coffee mugs are the most common example that everybody knows about so there is a coffee mug and uh, the, this raw material is there and your 
painting or your artwork or a design is digitally printed on it. So all you have to do is give the image to the person who prints it. There are websites like uh, Print Trove and uh, you know a bunch of them like Zazzle is there in, in uh, uh, which is international where uh, they you don't have to print and keep the stock. You just upload your design. They have a bunch of base products like this, bags, t-shirts. As and when there is an order, so it's called print on demand. So let people just, uh, you know, it is printed when somebody places an order, your design is selected and it is printed on the product of their choice, the customer's choice. And it is printed by this print on demand company, this website, and they do the shipping. So things have become much easier. So if you are sort of, you know, an artist uh, who is, uh, uh, who wants a sort of a, a sustenance money or, you know, and at the same time, continue with their art practice. This is one option where you have your designs, you know, going online and uh, somebody is actually producing and shipping it for you. And all you are doing is uploading your artwork. And otherwise you can also make this a mainstream business. And uh, the only thing is marketing, whichever paths you take, like I take the path of actually sourcing the material, I'll buy the fabric, I'll print it, and then I'll go to a tailor. That gives me flexibility in uh, terms of, you know, uh, different products, not just the set products that are available with drop shipping, as it is called, print on demand. So in that, uh, I'm creating the stock and I'm keeping. And in whichever path, you need to know marketing and how to get your product distributed. It is pretty much the same for an artist. How do you distribute your artworks? How do you approach an art gallery or multiple art galleries, convince them to keep your work? So as a skill, marketing and distribution is has to be included in the curriculum. <laughs> so it's I not there. It's I don't think it's there. They, th that's one thing that they don't teach them. In they the... don't teach how to survive. They yes. teach you yeah. how to create. Probably so. this is one field where they really need to learn how to survive. Because, um, yeah. you know, it's it's very uh, unpredictable. The methods are very unpredictable. Yeah. So uh, now we have touched upon so many different aspects. And as Dimant also uh, enlightened us that, uh, you know, there are... Uh, various avenues that a person can move into right from doing fine art and this is how you enter into these various things like even Akshay said you can really split hair and depends on whether you go into textile or you go into paintings or artifacts or whatever now keeping all these different avenues in mind is it that uh, a person should get into this only if he now when we are speaking to you three uh, Akshay is accomplished in his own way. Dimant is still painting. Akshay is still doing uh, printmaking. But do you suggest that a person should look at this at an early stage or should he wait to see whether he is successful as a professional artist or not? What would you advise? A word of advice uh, to these aspiring students. I would not say that uh, I think uh, you can start off as an early stage. It's better that way. Because uh, when you move from, there's a transition, like when you move from being an artist to being a conservator, when you decide that, because conservation needs a lot of practice and a lot of, it takes a lot of time out of, out of your daily schedule. You cannot just uh, jump here and there. It's very difficult because like when you go on a site, you work on a site, 10 days, 15 days, you're out, completely out of touch of your personal artwork. So it's better if you start from an early day, if you have that kind of a passion for that. If you're an accomplished artist, you still can move, but you may not be as successful as a restorer who started from an early day. Right. So I would suggest, yes, you can go for a training. You can join National Museum Institute. There's a two-year course for that, where they teach you different aspects of conservation, different the chemical studies, the knowledge of color, the how the different processes involved. So it's better that you have a beforehand knowledge, beforehand study knowledge for that. So quite early if possible. 
I didn't do that because I didn't get that opportunity. I straight away started on working on sites because I didn't want to be a conservator full time. जो मेरा वर्क स्टूडियो में या कहीं पे भी आप काम करें किसी के लिए काम करें or based on requirement you have to do art that also you can enjoy and you can do the best and the perfection wo sab kuch zaruri hai but same time it's it's not your own project or it's not okay. your own uh, art like wo kisi ke liye kar so jab main apne liye art kar raha hu so jab bhi time milega saturday sunday ya to night mein office ke baad uh, i keep on doing my art so kabhi bhi uh, uh, aisa like uh, all the credit goes to my family because they uh, like bahut bahut sara freedom milta hai mujhe jo ghar ka kaam ya uske liye mujhe shopping ke liye jana hai to wo bahut hi compromise karte hai lekin uski wajah se main jo art side mein main uh, sustain kar paya और मुझे जो चाहिए या मेरा फ्रीडम है मैं कुछ भी आर्ट पेंटिंग करूं या स्कल्पचर करूं या कोई भी एक्सपेरिमेंट करूं आर्ट के साथ तो उसके लिए मुझे बहुत ही सो एक्चुअली स्ट्रेस बस्टर है आप ऑफिस का काम से आप बोर हो के या तो बहुत ही स्ट्रेस है और आपको जब पेंटिंग करेंगे तो वो आप रिलैक्स हो जाते हैं so yeah. i want to chip in and uh, you know give a little uh, perspective on even the big names in the art world today you know uh, they all uh, did uh, uh, they always had a job or a, a, a thing which sustained them because right now there are a lot of artists who can sustain themselves on uh, just selling artworks but it wasn't so 30 40 years ago or even before that and uh, like even artists such as uh, ad subramanyam and uh, prabhakar barve you know they used to uh, do tech designing for textiles at the weaver service center and uh, they did it for several years and that was a job that they did uh, many of the senior uh, artists uh, you know in the past and even today you will find that they are teaching uh, as professors at you know finance college but they are practicing artists as well uh, they are teaching in schools uh, they they could be doing workshops uh, you know and teaching skills uh, which young children or hobbyists want but at the same time and th- that really sustains them that pays the bills and they pays for the art material and at the same time they have enough time to uh, you know make art so it, it historically all over the world and in india uh this has this is always there it's it's a very new thing where people have uh just dependent or depended on the sales of art as sustenance that is a very new thing and it's a little uh you know a flash in the pan it doesn't work out for everybody and it in the financial cycles also art is not always on top right so uh, so so that so whenever if anybody is taking art as a, a fine art or painting or any creative field as a, a, as a choice for you know they want to study that and make art they need to have it at the back of their mind that that's not you know getting uh, that's not the ticket uh, they need to figure out something else that can also help them sustain to to uh let me give a chance to akshay ji to complete he was talking about so we had a spot drop in the electricity so we got disconnected so yeah i completely agree with what jason said because a lot of students uh, they come to me and they ask me like even if they are good in art even if they are good in drawing they ask me like should you pursue art or not should we go into an fine arts college or not i always tell them See, this is not a lucrative career. 
first thing keep that in mind it's not like a you keep a there's a hierarchy that you become a manager you become a ceo of a company and you do that it's never that's not right don't think that once you enter you have to be two years for yourself to understand the world you have to go between the people roam around the galleries see the artwork how things are working study the market what kind of works are available what kind of buyers are there your your kind of work whether it's good or not when you enter the field so i tell them okay like 20 years back i tell them keep 10 years in hand before you become half successful yeah i mean it's very true because there were not too much of galleries also there were not too much of museums also 20 years back when i was studying only a handful of them now a lot of private galleries are there art exhibitions are happening art fairs are happening now so the opportunities are growing day by day but yes you have to keep yourself in the field you can't shift away from that like i said conservation still you can work in the art field but with working in art you cannot do conservation it's very difficult after doing conservation whatever time you have you can do your own artwork which i do but with being a full time artist you cannot do conservation so that's how you have to keep a balance for that and then depend on every individual yeah. so that's uh, that's really uh, what the entire thing is about whether we are talking about fine art or any other field the balance is always there and hard work is the uh, absolute uh, bottom line that is something that nobody can escape whether you're getting into being a professional artist or you're getting into any of the other uh, alternate uh, paths that you would be following but yes we have been enlightened with different aspects that a fine artist can take up there are a lot of artists uh, there are different limitations that we see a lot of uh, young girl artists also who uh, do not you know they they get married and then um, there's a limitation and they cannot really pursue professionalism you know in just doing paintings and selling or just doing sculpture there are instances of very successful young girls but there are also instances where girls are not you know uh, encouraged to take up further so there are different these different avenues that they can probably shift to and uh, yes it's a, a very uh, you know steady source of income that they would look at and they can still pursue their art uh, i hope this entire thing has given a lot of insight to the students who have uh, present here with us today because i feel we have covered quite a few uh, you know uh, avenues and the one thing that we have not touched upon is the question of uh, research the, uh, the area of research in art where cataloging uh, researching all these aspects come into play and um, of course it's part of museology also but even apart from museology there are a lot of large collections that require cataloging services that require archiving services so these are other avenues that can be explored the subject is very large uh, the idea of today's talk was basically to give them some insight that if you do not want to just pursue painting or sculpture there are other avenues open to you so i thank you all for being here and uh, i leave it to shruti to take things forward i just demand you want to say something yeah i like to add a small point uh one thing i think students should always keep in mind that uh, they should have attitude to learn different mediums of different art forms uh wo kai na kai avenue naya open kar deta hai so wo uh, personally mujhe bahut help hua jo mera sculpture ka ye nahi hai lekin uh, maine sculpture jo fine art mein kiya tha uh, college mein kiya tha एंड uh, वो सब फाइनली मुझे हेल्पफुल हुआ मैं पैरल ही करता रहा एंड uh, बाहुबली का जो फर्स्ट uh, बाहुबली uh, बना तो उसमें भी कुछ कुछ न कुछ कनेक्शन मिलता है कि ये स्कल्पचर अच्छा करता है या तो फेस मैच करता है तो मैं बाहुबली का जो राणा का स्कल्पचर है वो भी बना है सो so, कहीं ना कहीं uh, जो सीखा हुआ है ना जो भी आर्ट uh, फॉर्म्स 
वो आपको प्रोफेशनली काम में आ जाता है सो लर्निंग एटीट्यूड है ना ऑल द टाइम डिफरेंट आर्ट फॉर्म्स को लर्न करना दैट शुड बी ऑलवेज देयर थ्रू आउट योर लाइफ वेरी ट्रू दिमंत वेरी वेरी ट्रू लर्निंग शुड ऑलवेज रिमेन यू यू शुड नॉट हैव दैट एटीट्यूड कि हम सीख चुके हैं और यही है because we are all learning i mean today we have learned such a lot every day we are learning that's a non going process uh, actually ye, yes akshay yeah yeah like demand you said like whatever field you choose apart from art like once you start your career as an artist okay now for 5 years or 10 years even if you shift to some different field i would suggest that you should not leave art your your, your art practice should always be there No matter how much time you give to it, whether one hour a day or two hours a day or five hours a day, you should never leave that. Because no matter what, it's always going to help you in every field. Whether you are a curator, whether you are a conservator, whether you are an animator, or whether you are a film producer or whatever, your practicing art should always be there. You should not not get away from it. True. Very true. Correct. Ah. Uh, should we open this to any questions from the audience does anybody have any kind of questions we take one or two if there are any questions please speak up or raise your hand next thing hamesha bolta hu jab bhi workshop hota hai ya to main conduct karta hu workshop student jab bhi mainly for students like they should have a lot of questions to wo usse na kabhi bhi sai matlab sharma nahi hai kuch nahi ke liye koi bhi stupid question hai to bhi wo ek naya cheez sikha tha to to there is also sorry yeah please go ahead yes sir go ahead okay so uh, so there there are many we feel, uh, talked about many fields but there is also this thing of us sort of uh, you know working with galleries so as gallery assistants or gallery managers uh, you know designing catalogs and books so this is also in a way you are ordering but at the same time you are keeping in touch uh, with the art field very closely you know you are sort of in the circles and you are making money and you are making art on the side so the first few years can be very busy but this is one way of staying in the circle because sometimes when you do these other things we can be away from the art circle and you could get alienated so if you can if you have the opportunity go into this as well and it teaches a lot of uh, like doing uh, you know being a gallery assistant or a manager when you're in the gallery setup you learn a lot of the back end things so you learn not you learn marketing your on somebody else's dime <laughs> uh, you know so you are learning uh, 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 you are making contacts with buyers the people the viewers how they view art so all this is part of the learning in making your art and in selling it later in the future so i think that is also one uh, it may not be very there may not be that many opportunities because there are few galleries but that is one place to explore yes sure is so uh, i think uh, we've said quite a lot and uh, we've touched upon a lot of different aspects so should so we there's one thing i would like to ask okay uh, okay uh, just now i'd like to ask one thing like to said the uh, art licensing okay so uh, i just have a few uh, couple of questions like when you license art work from an artist is it like you license the complete work of art from an artist or does it depends on like for example you take a mug okay now you want an artwork for that so is it like you license the complete artwork from an artist or you take a particular image imagery from that particular artwork no so it is a whole uh, painting and uh, then uh, uh, so so one painting could be adapted not just on a mug but it can also be adapted on a bag or something else so depending on the surface we take uh, or is the whole painting or just a motif as you are asking me and uh, can you hear me yeah 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 okay so 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 i uh, so i license the entire image of the painting and i i think i did not mention this 
earlier that when I license, it also means that artists earn royalties on every sale that I make. So this is also like a alternative stream of revenue for artists whose work I am licensing. Um, so they get a little pocket money for their art material every now and then when I make a, a decent sale of their products, you know. So, yeah. So is it limited uh, time? No. It is for limited time period or lifetime license you have? Lifetime license, but it is an understanding between the artist and myself that uh, uh, if they want to withdraw or if, you know, we want to use another artwork or a bunch of other images, so that is a, a discussion, which is, I mean, we have a memorandum of understanding with several there are terms and conditions, which we, um, you know, all these are, aspects are covered. So what do you do with the original, uh, that particular original painting? It is either sold or it is with the artist or it is sometimes even in a museum, um, you know. So, yeah, I, I don't have the original works. That has nothing to do with me. I, the artist has to... Uh, you know, once we decide this, then the artist kind of picks out images. Uh, so there's a discussion to and fro. Uh, this is the kind of requirement. This is the product and what will work and, you know, so that sort of a thing. And then they pick the images that they are open to licensing. Right. <laughs> so we have uh, Shailesh Damri who would like to ask a question. Uh, uh, Shailesh, yes. if you unmute and go ahead. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, my question is, my uh, uh, um, question is that uh, Sir Jovia Sir is related. Hai. Uh, also, my son is in here now. My question is that Jovia uh, Sir is art and animation. Mein jana jata tha. Lekin abhi yahan be, me, I, I am from Rajkot in Gujarat. So, he didn't go there. His question is that online courses that are happening, Udemy, which the madam has told me. So, in Udemy, there are other platforms that can do online courses. Online courses are not available. Online courses are available. I prefer to go to the institute and hands on training. So, it will be good. If you go to the abroad, the course is going to be good. So, I think you can save money in that way. Or you can save a lot of things. You can save time and everything. But if you are in India, I think it is the best that you can learn a lot of institutes. और कोई स्टूडियो में काम करके इंटर्नशिप में भी आप काम कर सकते हैं या तो सीख सकते हैं तो ये पर्टिकुलर एनिमेशन के लिए क्योंकि एनिमेशन में बहुत ही डीप मीडिया में तो वो रेगुलर आप इंटरेक्शन करेंगे तो यू विल लर्न फास्टर जल्दी सीखेंगे और कोई दूसरा जो ऑनलाइन कोर्सेस है I don't have any idea. I think Savita or Tekha, Akshay Ji and Jasmine. Jasmine. I don't have to do it online. But for drawing or generally hands-on or physical work, if it is guided work, that is definitely better. I don't know about the online courses, whether online may उतना वो लोग काम करवाते हैं और कितना गाइडेंस मिलता है बट जैसे कॉलेजेस में हम देखते हैं कि देर आर वेरी लेस नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स इन ईच क्लास तो क्या है हर एक के ऊपर ध्यान होता है और हर एक का माइंडसेट क्या है थॉट प्रोसेस क्या है उसको रिफाइन करने में वो टीचर का हाथ भी होता है तो दैट इज अफिनेटली डिफरेंट लर्निंग प्रोसेस आजकल सब कुछ ऑनलाइन है लेकिन Uh, teaching online, especially with art, I won't be able to say. Just one example, my daughter has done Aditya Chari with an online course in lockdown. And she learned a lot of people. So, who has learned it and how she learned it, that also matters a lot. And how many sessions do she do. तो कुछ जो अच्छे टीचर्स हैं जो ऑनलाइन सिखाते हैं वो उसके साथ अगर सीखेंगे तो 
वो लोग वेल प्लान एंड बहुत ही पैशन से सिखाते उनको पता है कि कैसे सिखाना है एग्जैक्टली एग्जैक्टली दैट मेक्स अ डिफरेंस एनी एनीबॉडी एल्स शुड बी ओपन टू वन मोर क्वेश्चन इफ इफ समबडी हैज अ क्वेश्चन देन प्लीज टेल अस आई एम सॉरी इट्स रेनिंग हेवीली हियर ओह सो आई थिंक द इंटरनेट वी हैव हैड अ लॉट ऑफ रेन इन बॉम्बे बट जस्ट नाउ इट्स फाइन एट लीस्ट ओवर हियर इट्स फाइन सो आई थिंक वी कैन रैप अप दिस इवनिंग we've had a very uh, insightful evening and uh, there's lots to take home so shruti can i hand it over to you uh thank you so much sarita ma'am for mentoring the discussion for this evening i would like to thank the panel for the evening akshay sir jasmine ma'am and demon sir thank you for sharing your wisdom and knowledge it was quite an insightful evening as an artist myself i did get to learn a lot from the discussion and i'm sure this will definitely help the students and everyone present here to gain a wider perspective towards different careers in art once again thank you everyone for taking out your time and joining us this evening do check out our exhibition it's all at galleryprarsha.com it's an online exhibition by students art student artists that cater to different tastes and budgets do take a look at it and thank you once again thank you thank you sarita thank you akshay so and uh... Uh, just mean the thank you having you all here yeah nice meeting you <laughs> yeah, same here yeah. yeah, hope to meet see you all soon yeah. bombay bombay yes, milenge in bangalore in bangalore mein aayenge to milenge yeah because i uh, i used to come there in tact in bangalore in tact bangalore the kala parishad the conservation institute in bangalore so i have few of my friends over there in tact bangalore आपका कांटेक्ट लेता हूं सविता जी से हां हां दोनों का शॉट थैंक यू थैंक यू टू ऑल इट वाज इट वाज प्लेजर बीइंग ऑन दिस प्लेटफार्म एंड हैविंग दिस डिस्कशन थैंक्स थैंक्स अ लॉट थैंक यू थैंक यू ऑल या यस सर जी हां बोलो हां Uh, मेरे बड़े भैया थे वो अश्विन डामी शायद आपको नाम मालूम होगा विद्यानगर ही थे वो हां नाम सुना हां हाँ, वो से ही किया ओ, ग्रेट, ग्रेट. <laughs> तो उन्होंने मुझे ये लिंक भेजा है मुझे तो मालूम नहीं था कि ये कि, किस सेशन के बारे में है तो उन्होंने मुझे भेजा है ये थैंक यू ओके थैंक यू पीपल इन बॉम्बे सॉरी जस्ट क्विक यू नो रंजीत दहिया रंजीत दहिया He is a big uh, mural channel. Yeah. That uh, you know, B A P Bap. Ah, Bap. Oh, it's a. We are doing those big murals on walls. Oh, we did that. Did it? Dada Sahib Phalke ka. This me Bandra me did it. I mean, Bombay people should know that. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I am not aware. He is very popular over there. I mean, he used to paint like uh, the walls of buildings with film personalities. I have heard of that, but I am not able to relate to the name. But yeah, I've seen the yeah Bollywood uh, themed, uh, yes. especially in Bandra and Varli. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, the same. So he's the one. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, he's the one. <laughs> so he's also an artist, like, but he went to NID, then he yeah. left designing, went into this wall painting in murals and all. So my thing is like, the field is very diverse. Yes. Hmm. What clicks you, you don't know your for yourself also. True. So, so. Yeah. It keeps on changing, but you have to be very passionate about it. Hmm. You do. That's true. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. That's a Thank great you. parting shot. <laughs> It's a diverse field. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.